ABC's version of the Kellogg Bryant Pact. Originally named after its authors, Frank B. Kellogg, the U.S. Secretary of State, and the French Foreign Minister, Aristide Bryant, it was originally signed on August 27, 1928 by Germany. Germany wonders what happened to peace without victors, yeah? I'm sick and tired of these European conflicts. U.S. is out. Belgium, Belgium wants one million, zillion, jillion dollars. <laughs> France wants your France wants reparations, and if you're not gonna pay, we're taking German resources. <laughs> United Kingdom. The United Kingdom just wants to keep the navy. Yeah, there, Canada. Eh? Australia. Good day from Australia, mate. This better be quick, cause we got shrimp on the barbie. I'm New Zealand. This is my national bird. South Africa. Play some football. Yeah, Italy. Mamma mia, Italy. Ireland. I'm Irish. I have to get home soon. It's five o'clock somewhere. Japan. Konnichiwa. Japan will not be told to do what to do by Europe. Poland, we like sausage. And Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Czechoslovakia. <laughs> also known as the Pact of Paris. However, its formal name is the German General Treaty for the Renunciation of War. The Pact renounced aggressive war, prohibiting the use of war as an instrument of national policy. Let's take a look back at that day in August. Sanction should be allowed, eh? Um, well, you know, I think that maybe, um, I don't agree with that. Well, you know, I think that all parties agree should agree to refrain from war. Yeah, Diplomacy I no. should be the new policy for all countries involved. Oh, wait, I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I, I think this would be a great way to calm down the public and reassure them. Ah, I dare. I disagree. I disagree. Guys? So, no, we're done? So, we're done. Alright. Eating it. Where are you going? <laughs> well, this is all good on paper. However, the Kellogg Bryan Pact aims to bring an end to war. All future disputes, disputes among them were to be resolved only by specific means. Sixty nations agreed to outlaw war as an instrument of national policy, and the acceptance were accompanied by expressions of thanks for the privilege of joining. At first, M. Bryan objected, as he thought it might conflict with the Covenant of the League of Nations, under which member nations of the League must go to the aid of any member nation that is attacked. Secretary Kellogg explained that his plan would not prevent a nation from keeping its promises or defending itself. The Moscow government made it clear that it had neither enthusiasm nor admiration for the treaty, but accepted it because it does not impose certain obligations upon countries before the bar of public opinion. The treaty was ratified by the United States on January 16, 1929 by a vote of 85 to 1 with the crucial reservations that it must not limit America's right to defend itself and must not oblige the U.S. to take action against those who broke it. Secretary Kellogg attributed its success to the fact that it was negotiated in the open and had the sentiment of the people of the world behind it, or did it, remains a binding treaty under international law, but failed there was no way of enforcing it. <laughs> the pact was broken when the Japanese invaded Manchuria, China in 1931. It provided no method to enforce its provisions. As a practical matter, the Kellogg-Bryant Pact did not live up to its aims of ending war, and in this sense it made no immediate contribution to international peace and proved to be an ineffective in the years to come. It did not prevent the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931, the, Italian, the Italian invasion of Abyssinia in 1935, and the German-Soviet invasion of Poland. Notably, the Pact served 
served as the legal basis for the creation of the notion of crime against peace. It has also served as one of the legal bases establishing the international norms that the treaty or use of military force in contravention of international law as well as the territorial acquisitions resulting from it are unlawful. This treaty is very valuable because by creating it right now, the causes are all fresh in our mind. Uh, no. We should wait a few years because then we can look back on these events and better understand the causes. Right now, during this time, people are scared of war and they're not thinking rationally. Well, it's originating in a place where all the countries are speaking on their own behalf. Yeah, but you're not listening to everyone. The only people that have a voice here are the victors. This is a primary source, so we know exactly what it says. There's no secondary interpretations. The purpose of this... The purpose of this is you guys are just seeking revenge, and a peace cannot exist with victors on a tangent for reparations. The purpose of this is to create a peace, which is a good thing. But Russia's not here to speak, and they're ginormous, and it's just a false sense of peace. Kellogg Briand was a pest. It was written by 62 nations, decided to act, and the feelings that war was not good and encouraged lots of peace in the neighborhood. This pact made all wars against the law, but according to our narrator, there were a few flaws. The original goal was not met, which was to assure the public that peace would be kept. Judging by the Second World War, the Kellogg Briand pact did not accomplish what it was made for. Word. Traveling in a fight at Gumby On a hippie trail head full of zombies okay. The phrase across the bottom, a political thyroid operation, likely refers to the way politics were run. In the body, the thyroid is a gland that keeps the rest of the body functioning normally. In the cartoon, the doctors seek to transfer the sanctions gland, likening sanctions to that which keeps the body the way it should be. Or in this case, the way it has always been, before. The cartoon implies that by allowing an economic sanctions, the Kellogg Brand Pact is condoning the same behavior which it outwardly claims to condemn. Peace would be kept. Like, mm, judging by the second. 